wheeling the big dog into the workshop, trying not to scratch my new paint job. <laughs> Got a few things to do to the big T7. What we're focusing on today though is a new chain and sprocket, so stick around. So a quick little chin wag before we go ahead and get stuck into this job. Uh, I just wanted to mention that I was actually going to do a 520 conversion on this bike. So switch it to a 520 pitch chain. In the end I've decided not to. I'm sticking with a 525, the stock size chain. The reason I didn't end up going, well the reason I wanted to go with a 520 chain to start with was A, they're way more available. You know, there's a lot more 520 chains to choose from. Uh, they are cheaper, uh, but you know they're easier to find. Everywhere's got them. Yeah, they're a little bit lighter, uh, so less rotating mass. So that doesn't really matter to me. Um, but yeah, basically the price because the 520 chains that we normally get that we actually got for Nats 390 and we used to get for the enduro bikes uh, were only like $99, and they were RHK gold chains, uh, O-ring chains, and they they're really good. Uh, for the price, but as it turns out, those chains that we used to get are only 120 links. Now the Tenere needs 122 links. Trying to find a 520 chain with more than 120 links is somewhat difficult. They are out there, but the price just blows way out. Uh, I think the cheapest one I could find when I was looking was about 200 bucks, so double the price. In the end, it was cheaper for me to just stick with a 525. They do have conversion kits, obviously, um, the R1, the Yamaha R1 conversion kit will work with this bike from what I've read. Oh, the other reason is the 520 chains have a clip style master link, you know, the one that, that clips on and you can take it off without a grinder, uh, which I like. Um, I, I'm sort of used to those chains. I've never had a, a drama with them. Most, all of the 525 chains that I've seen have rivet style master links, so a bit more of a pain in the ass. Obviously more durable, but you know, I do prefer the clip style ones. So that brings me to my next point. I had to go and buy a chain breaker slash joiner. So that's a chain riveter. I've never used one of these before, so it's gonna probably be interesting. We'll work through it together anyway. See how we go. The other thing to note is this Tenere 700 now has just over 19,000 kilometers on it stock chain and sprockets they seem fine to me they look like they're in pretty good condition but we'll have a closer look at them uh, when i get them off the bike you know let's have a look at what we've got here so this is the ek chain that i got i'll put the prices as i said up on the screen for this stuff super sprocks 15 tooth front sprocket i've gone with the stock size for that one for the rear the jt sprocket um, I've gone with a 45 instead of a 46. Now I was originally going to get a 16 tooth for the front, just to, you know, give it longer legs on the road. You know, if it was no good in the in the rough stuff, I would have gone back to the 15. But in the end, um, 45 gone down one tooth on the back. I don't think I'll notice the difference. But um, the reason I actually ended up getting the 45 is the seller that I was buying, I think, the chain off, happened to have a 45 in stock. So it was, I thought it was close enough, we'll grab that. The chain tool I got is the cheapest one you can get. I've seen pretty good reviews of it. Uh, I think it was like 20 bucks maybe. So obviously the first step is to remove the uh, front sprocket guard. We'll take that off. I'll loosen off the countershaft sprocket nut before I do anything else because I'll probably need to put my foot on the rear brake to stop the engine turning over so I can loosen that off because I don't have an impact uh, ratchet thingy. But I do have a breaker bar, so uh, we'll see how we go. So we need a five millimeter Allen key for the front sprocket cover. Uh, if you guys saw on a ride last year, late last year, I broke one of the studs that holds the sprocket cover off when the chain derailed, broke the Break the stud right off the uh, case, so that's one less bolt that I have to undo anyway. Okay, sprocket guard is off. Yeah, that 
front sprocket's looking a little bit worn, but uh, I reckon it's got another five, ten thousand Ks in it. But, you know, I've got the uh, shit here, so I'm going to replace it. Alright, hopefully I've got a socket of that size. Right, hey, unfortunately guys, apparently the countershaft sprocket nut is a 30 mil. I have over 27, over 26, and I have a 32, which is not going to do it. Um, so I'm going to have to go and get myself a 30 mil socket. Uh, hmm. There we go. All right, let's see if we can't crack this uh, front sprocket nut. So, come over to the other side of the bike where I can put my uh, weight on the rear brake. Oh, it is tight. This thing is tight. Oh, man, this uh, sprocket nut is giving me some grief. Uh, apparently, it does pay to put your glasses on and have a bit of a closer look uh, before you start struggling away because, as you can see here, there are little tabs that they bend down onto a flat surface of the counter shaft. Um, so if we release, you know, bend those back out for starters, it's gonna help a bit. Just need a small flat screwdriver. But I have uh, Googled a, you know, looked up on YouTube another technique to use if I can't if I still can't get this off so to keep the brake on without uh, you know keeping my foot on there the whole time I've cut a piece of timber just to the right length so I can jam the brakes on full hard you know with this timber jammed in between the brake pedal and the uh, SRC crash bars there so I don't know if I can put that on with one hand while holding the camera but oh yeah, there we go so that keeps the brake on So it's still not coming, um, we're going to have to move to DEFCON 5. So the method that I saw on the YouTube, um, old mate says to remove the wrap wheel, so we're going to do that. Since it's going to be coming off anyway. And then we uh, replace the axle back through the swing arm. And through the chain as well. So we're just we're just putting a zip tie to keep the two two sides of the chain together. So I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, screwdrivers down through the links on both sides. So once that pulls tight, all right. Let's see if we can knock the bike off the stand. Now I would be applying some heat to this guys if I had a blowtorch or something, but I don't. So we um, just have to work with what we have. Oh, something broke. Zip tie. <laughs> what I'm going to try instead of the screwdriver is I'm just going to put a, a pair of vice grips onto the chain. This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> Holy shit. Honestly, I thought that fucking counter shaft 
was gonna break. Unbelievable. That was tight, like that's a big breaker bar. Okay, so just to quickly re reiterate what I did there guys. Wheel off, axle back through the swing arm, pair of vice grips over, you know, on both sides of the chain there. Locks it. Yeah, that works. Probably not recommended if you're keeping your chain, but uh, if you're changing your chain and you don't care too much about it, then yeah, go for it. Audio behind the nut we have a washer, so I'll just put those aside. Hopefully we can get this sprocket off without removing the uh, shift rod. Beautiful. The Yamaha sprocket's actually quite chunky if you look at the difference in thickness between the two, between the super sprocks. I think, you know, the chunk of it's just, yeah, on either side, so it should still sit in the same, you know, the same, be lined up properly with the chain. Now, I think the next step we'll do, I will remove the rear sprocket and replace that with the new one, um, and then we'll take the chain off. Look about a 12 mil. 13, I said. 14, I said. Don't you listen. <laughs> All right. 14. Sprocket nuts. Washers. Alright, oh, new sprockets. Okay. Now these are locking nuts. There was no thread lock on them from factory. You can thread lock them if you want to. I'm not going to because they are locking nuts. Now don't be a dick. Always talk these up to specifications. Done. Onto the chain. Alright, so with your more expensive chain breakers, I believe you can just whack them on and punch the pin straight out of there. Um, but with this cheap one, I have read that you know, you've got to grind the tip off, grind that off flat before you press it out or else it will just break the tool. Normally I would just grind this off while it's sitting on the sprocket, um, but because I've taken the wheel off, I'm not going to put it back on, I've just zip tied it. Uh, onto the chain guard bracket there. Hopefully it's going to stay there. All right, let's try out this chain breaker. Look, we just need the spring and the thickest of the punches. Take that one out of there. We pop the spring over the punch and then it goes in. So you want to keep the punch there below level there. So then we put this guy over the chain. There's a little hole there that the other side pin will fit in. You want to try and make sure you got it nice and centered. Just grab a shifter, tighten this up. See if we can break the tool on the first use. I do have a handle here in case we're working with a chain that's not on a sprocket. There you go. Well, nice and easy now, so pin is out. Awesome. Chain broken. Alright guys, so we have the stock chain and sprockets here. Hopefully you can see that bad boy. You know, it's, it's in pretty good nick. To me, that's got a lot of life left in it yet. Front sprocket. 
They are starting to bend over a little bit, but you know, that's, that's still serviceable. Yeah, I would say, you know, to be safe, replace it, but it still looks okay. As for the chain, well, it's had a bit of abuse today, as you've seen, um, but you know, there's no real stiff links in it or anything yet. It's still in pretty good nick. A little bit of surface rust on there. And guys, look, if you watch this channel, you'll know uh, that I don't, I don't use chain lube and shit like that. Over the 20,000 kilometer lifespan of this chain and sprockets, all it's ever had on it is silicon spray. And recently, more recently, I've switched to WD-40. So there you go. If that doesn't prove that chain lubes are an absolute waste of time and all they do is make a big mess of your bike, well, I don't know what is because, yeah. And furthermore, the only time the, the chain of sprockets ever get a bit of lube is after I wash the bike. So when I wash it, you know, I'll dry it all off and, and lube the chain and that's pretty much it. Uh, sometimes if, I'm not, if I know I'm not going to be washing it for a while and I've been riding in the rain or through a lot of creek crossings and I know that, you know, it could still have moisture on it, then I will lube it um, then as well. But yeah, generally just after a wash. Um, I have recently decided to start using Inox on the chain. It does sort of stay, like it, it's not like a sticky chain lube that mucks up your bike or anything, but uh, it does sort of stay nice and moist. Um, and will stop it from corroding for a bit longer, I think, than WD-40 or silicon spray. Okay, got to look at the new chain. There's our rivet master link. Oh, nice. Every other chain I've ever gotten has been covered in grease when you buy it. It's nice that this one isn't. As I said, I think that this one is 124 links. I might just lay these out on the ground and uh, compare the length. So yeah, slightly longer on the new one, so we are going to have to take one pair of links off. Um, but what I'm going to do first is throw the back wheel back on and the front sprocket on. And I'll uh, put the chain through and just make sure uh, where I want to cut it. So I will slip this front sprocket on there. Remember to tighten that up later on when we've got the uh, got everything fitted up nice. That is with all the links on there. It's definitely going to be too loose. So if we go to the next set of links. Of course, you have to remember that you can't just take off one link. You gotta take off two so that uh, you can rejoin it. So, just normally I'll put a, like a zip tie or something through the chain where I wanna cut it. Or uh, in this case, I just know that it's one, two, three, the third one along that I'm gonna grind off. Always double and triple check to make sure that you're not stuffing it up. So you wanna be left with the thinner part on both sides Right, with the uh, snazzy little chain breaker tool, um, go ahead and whip these links off. Now uh, guys, that's our two links removed. So you can see we've ended up with these two narrower parts. So the, uh, you know, the master link will go over those two. So you want to take the time to prep these properly, guys. Um, the grease that is provided in this little sachet goes on the inside, inside of the chain, in, in between the O-rings. So that's what lubes these O-ring chains, not the crap that you spray on the outside of it. So get this nice and coated with grease before you put it in there and uh, it will serve you well. You need two O-rings. Put two O-rings onto the master link. Then we grease that up. Okay, we slit open the grease. Put a nice helping onto these uh, chain pins here, go around. I even usually like to put a little bit inside the link itself. 
you can't have too much grease inside these links. Alright, so now basically we just want to, well we can do it on the sprocket or off. Alright, so our greased up master link goes into the chain. Now we put our O-rings on the opposite side of course. Okay, so the trouble I was having, guys, is this stupid piece here. It doesn't actually line up perfectly with the two pins on, on there. So what I've ended up doing is putting this cap. I've screwed that onto the end there. I don't know what that's for. Obviously for something else. Yeah, just put that on the back. And then the tip of that just pushes that on nicely. You know, those side plates are fairly solid. It takes take quite a lot to um, to bend it or anything, so I'm not too worried about that. It's still pretty straight. So um, we just need to press it on so that, the, you know, the, the O-ring gap is the same for our master link as what it is for all the other links. So you don't want to go in too tight, but um, yeah, you do want to go in tight enough. So I'll just give this one a little bit more. pretty good so that's our side plate pressed into place you probably want to just check to make sure that your links are nice and loose that you haven't over tightened it they're looking real good so uh, now all we've got to do is uh, mushroom the he those heads out so that uh, it can't come off and uh, we'll be done all right so what we've got now is uh, what's called the large anvil which will go on the back and then we have the riveting tool which is a convex mushroom tip and we put the spring over it into the tool thread in that duvalaki now this is the bit that I'm not too sure about guys just do a little bit at a time and check it and that's the best way to do it Apparently, uh, if you put some verniers onto these, they're supposed to be a certain size. I don't think I have any, so I'm just going to eyeball it. I have a feeling that that's um, pretty much done. Still just making sure that these links aren't too tight. That's um, nice and free, that's good. All right, we'll see how we go with the second one. Okay, it's in position. Oh no, our chain is riveted. Lovely. You know, these uh, rivet links may be tough as nails, but <laughs> give me a bloody clip on master link any day. Right, pretty much all that's left to do now is tighten up the front sprocket countershaft nut. I'm going to just use my little stick on the brake on the other side and uh, tighten that up. I'm not going to go crazy like it was, um, but I'll definitely remember to pop down those little uh, sections that stop it from coming undone. Um, and then we need to uh, just tension the chain again, so it's uh, pretty easy. I think that's going to be well tight enough. So a little flat punch and hammer. Just knock those down. Just a little fail safe there. One on each side. Done. Sprocket cover back on. Uh, I'm going to thread lock these bolts. There's one thing I've learned with motorcycles, thread lock everything. This isn't uh, permanent lock tight even though it's red. It's 
So that's uh, basically it guys. I do need to uh, tension the chain, but what I'm going to actually do first is whip this rear sprocket off again and paint it black because I think it looks shit silver. I was going to see if I could get away with it, but um, yeah, no, I'm going to paint it. So uh, we'll come back to you after I've done that. Alright, sprocket's back on. It's got a nice bit of satin black paint on it. Looks much better than it did. Chain's all tension up. I'm not going to explain how I tension the chain because it's very dodgy, but it works. Chucked some new brake pads in while I was uh, in the vicinity. Anyway, that's the end of the video, guys. Hope you got some uh, enjoyment out of my struggling, especially getting that front sprocket nut off. Good times. I do have a couple of nice Camel ADV products to add to the T7 next. Uh, that'll be in another video real soon. Thanks for watching this one. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.